In Java tutorial three, we're learning while loops. Let's jump into it right away. Let's type while, a set of parentheses, and then a set of braces. Inside of the parentheses, we put our condition for the loop. This can be anything that evaluates to true or false. And as long as this condition is true, whatever is inside of the body of the loop, inside of the braces is going to keep executing. So for every pass of the loop, the condition will be evaluated. And if it's still true, then the body of the loop will execute. So inside of the condition for our loop, let's just put x is less than 10. And then inside of the body of our loop, let's print out the value of x. And let's just make the variable x right above the loop. We'll make it an int int x. Let's just start at 0. And inside of our loop, we have to remember to change the value of x somewhere. Otherwise, we'll enter what's called an infinite loop. And this will just keep printing x is 0 forever. So inside the body of our loop, let's just increase the value of x by 1. I'm just going to write plus plus x, which is the exact same as writing x equals x plus 1 or x plus equals 1. Increasing the value of 1 is just something that we do so often that there's a shortcut for it, which is plus plus x or x plus plus. We'll talk about the difference between plus plus x and x plus plus after. For now, let's just run this while loop. And after the body of our loop, let's just print out after the loop. So what's going to happen when this runs is first our condition will be evaluated. If it's true, which it is, then the code inside of the braces runs. If it's false, then it wouldn't run at all. In our case, it's true, so it'll run. And when it gets to the ending brace of the while loop, then it'll just go back up to the top and evaluate our condition again. And it'll just keep doing that over and over and over and over. And eventually, when x is no longer less than 10, then the execution will continue with whatever comes after the while loop. So we'll run this right now, and we'll just get x is 0 to x is 9. Now let's examine some of the other things we can put inside of the condition for our while loop. If you're following along with this little Java for Beginners tutorial series that I'm making, or the longer Java for Beginners video that I'm going to post, then there's going to be a few things that we do in here that we haven't seen yet. We'll cover them in detail later on. If you remember them, that's awesome because they're things that you'll use a lot. If not, then don't stress. I'm just going to introduce them so that we can learn a little bit more about while loops. So let's cover a few more things that we can put inside of the condition for our while loop. We could put while x is less than or equal to 10, which would just make our loop run one extra time while x is equal to 10. So instead of x is 0 to x is 9, we'll get x is 0 to x is 10. We could put something like while x equals 10. In our case right now, this wouldn't even run at all. But I just want to show that you can put while x is equal to something. And notice that I used the double equals. Single equals in Java is the assignment operator, which just assigns a value into a variable. And double equals is used for conditions. So when you use double equals, then the whole condition will evaluate to true or false instead of assigning the value of 10 into x. We could also do while x does not equal 10, which is exclamation mark equals. Right now, we would just get the exact same result as this first while loop that we ran, where it just prints out x is 0 to x is 9. We could also put a Boolean variable for the condition inside of our while loop. So we could put Boolean is hungry, set it to true. And then inside of the condition, we could just put is hungry which is the exact same as writing is hungry double equals true. Because Boolean variables can only have a value of true or false, then you can just leave out the double equals true. And as long as is hungry is true, then the loop is going to keep running. And then we'll just get rid of everything inside of the body of our loop. And let's put plus plus tacos eaten. So for every pass of the loop, our person is going to eat one taco. And we'll just make the variable tacos eaten above the loop, make it an integer and set it to zero to start with. And then inside of our loop, we're going to check to see if the number of tacos eaten is greater than or equal to five. And if it is, then we're going to say that the person's no longer hungry anymore because they've had five tacos. So we're just going to write if tacos eaten is greater than or equal to five, then is hungry is going to be set to false. So for every pass of the loop, tacos eaten is going to increase by one. And then the value of tacos eaten is going to be checked to see if it's greater than or equal to five. When it is greater than or equal to five, then is hungry is going to be set to false. And at that point, the execution will go back up to the top of the while loop, check the condition. It'll see that is hungry is now false. And then the code will just continue to whatever is past the while loop. And let's just put a print statement inside of the loop. We'll just print out the value of tacos eaten for every pass. Tacos eaten plus the variable tacos eaten. So we run this and we just get tacos eaten is one all the way up to tacos eaten is five and then after the loop. 
Now we're going to write out one more while loop. And this time we're going to take user input inside of the while loop. And we're going to check the value of that user input. And if the user has typed quit, then we're going to exit the while loop. Otherwise, we're going to keep taking in user input. To take in user input, we're just going to make a scanner. And no worries if you've never seen these before, they're really easy. We're just going to go scanner scnr equals new scanner system.in. So what's happening here is we're making a variable that can hold a scanner. So just setting aside a small piece of memory big enough to hold a scanner, naming that piece of memory scnr. And then on the right side of the equal sign, Java is actually making a new scanner object, which is just an object inside of your program to handle user input for you. And it's saying take that user input from system.in, which is just the standard input from the keyboard. We're going to cover scanners in depth later on. Right now, I just want to make one to use inside of our while loop. And in order to use scanners, we have to import the scanner class, which is just something we do so that we don't have to write the entire code for taking in user input ourselves. Instead, we just import a section of code into our program. All we have to do is go to the top of our program and type import java.util.scanner. And a shortcut for writing that all out is just to hit Control Shift O. And when we hit Control Shift O, Java's gonna come and see that there's something called a scanner that we don't have in our program. And it's gonna go check to see if it can import a scanner class. So we hit Control Shift O and it goes and finds the scanner class for us and just imports it. So now we can use our scanner to take in user input inside of a while loop. And let's store that user input inside of a string. So let's say string user input, and then we're gonna type equals scnr dot next line. So we're using that scanner object that we made and we're using it to take in the next line of user input. So whatever the user types next, once they hit enter, then the scanner is going to grab that line and it's going to store it inside of our string user input. Now let's make our loop. Let's go while user input does not equals quotations quit. And this isn't going to work because this isn't how you want to compare strings in Java. This works for comparing other values that does not equals and equals and less than and all that. Strings are kind of a special exception where it doesn't work. So while user input does not equals quit, and then we'll make the body of our loop. Let's just print out whatever the user typed. We'll put you typed plus user input. And then we'll get them to enter something new. So we'll just print out enter something new. And then we'll do the same as we did above our while loop, where we use scnr.nextline to take in the user value. I'll just copy and paste mine. So I went user input equals scnr.nextline. And let's also put some kind of prompt before the first user input gets taken in. We'll just print out enter sentence. And we'll run this and we'll get to enter something. So it says enter a sentence and you can type whatever you want and then hit the enter key. And our scanner object that we made is just going to take in whatever we just typed and store it inside of user input. So it says you typed and then what we typed enter something new and we can keep doing it again and again and again. But then when we type quit, then it's not going to quit because we compared our strings just using not equals. So I'll type quit right now. And it just says you typed quit and we can keep typing it, but it doesn't actually exit the loop. So we need to go into the condition for our loop and we say user input dot equals quit, which is just a special method that we use for comparing strings. And now for every pass of the loop, it will actually accurately compare the user input to see if it equals quit. If you're at all curious why it doesn't work using not equals quit, then I have a full video on that. It's actually a really interesting topic to check out and it can help you understand a lot of other complicated Java topics. So I'll put a link to that in the description. So let's run this right now. And as I'm looking at it, I'm seeing we actually should have typed while not user input equals quit because once they type quit, we want it to exit, but that's okay. It gives us another chance to look at the not operator. Let's run it right now as it is. And as soon as we type quit, then it'll keep going because we put while it equals quit, keep going. And when we type something else, then it will exit. And now let's go inside of our condition for the loop and we're going to put an exclamation mark. So earlier on in the video for not equals, we used exclamation mark equals. And in front of our user input dot equals, we can just put an exclamation mark. And that changes the whole thing to mean while user input does not equal quit. So if we run this now, then it'll keep going as long as the user input does not equal quit. 
So as soon as we type quit, then it will exit. If we type anything else, then it lets us keep going. And the very last thing I want to cover is something from the beginning of the video, which was our increment operator, when we increase the value of tacos eaten by just using plus plus. So we can also do this for minus minus, which is called the decrement operator. We can go minus minus tacos eaten, and it just decreases the value of tacos eaten by one. So I'll just label these. Here we have the increment operator and our decrement operator. And you can also write these out as tacos eaten plus plus or tacos eaten minus minus. And we'll write a print statement for the value of tacos eaten just to show the difference between plus plus tacos eaten and tacos eaten plus plus. Let's just go system.out.println tacos eaten plus plus. And I won't actually run this. We're just gonna explain what would happen when you do run it. So if we printed this out right now, the value of tacos eaten would be printed and then the value of tacos eaten would be increased by one because we put the plus plus after tacos eaten. But if you put it before tacos eaten, then the value of tacos eaten gets increased by one and then tacos eaten gets printed out. And it's the same if you say if tacos eaten plus plus is greater than five, then first tacos eaten will be checked to see if it's greater than five and then the value of tacos eaten will be increased. Whereas if we put the plus plus before, then tacos eaten would be increased by one, and then that value would be compared to see if it's greater than five. And when we use these operators before the variable, then that's called prefix. And when we use it after the value of the variable, then that's called postfix. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching. I'll put that link to my whole Java playlist in the description, as well as some links to some Java books to check out for anyone just getting started learning Java.